Okay, let's talk about the MDTP Elementary Algebra Readiness Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are a college student out in the great state of California and you are going to be taking the MDTP Elementary Algebra Readiness Exam, which means effectively that you're going to be trying to place into like a second year um, college uh, math class. So that might be like college algebra, something along those lines. But uh, effectively though, um, if you're going to be taking this assessment, the means that you've already mastered like Algebra 1. Okay, So on this particular um, assessment is going to be a lot of Algebra 1, high school level Algebra 1 um, uh, problems and you're going to really need to know your stuff to do well. And it pays to to do well on this exam so you can place into the right class at your college so you don't have to waste time or money by taking a math class that you don't really need to be taking you know spending an extra semester or year you know uh, to get you to the level that you need to get for whatever program you're trying to uh, accomplish. A little bit about myself, um, my name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math, uh, taught middle school math, high school math and beyond and I actually have a full test prep uh, course for the MDTP Elementary Algebra Readiness Exam. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to that course in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But what I got here is a little pop quiz for you. Something that you definitely should be able to handle. And this is, I kind of figure, yeah, this is kind of a basic problem. Okay, so you should definitely be able to uh, solve a problem like this to do well on the MDTP Elementary Algebra Assessment, Readiness Assessment. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and try to do it, obviously I'm going to solve it and then we'll maybe discuss a few points about it and I'll leave you with a little bit more advice. And let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so what I'm looking at here, what you're looking at, is just a basic what we call linear equation real basic kind of algebra equation and I'm gonna go ahead and solve it I'm not gonna to try to teach you how to solve this equation or equations in general that's just a bigger uh, topic but we'll discuss some uh, some points that can help you out alright so the first thing you want to do is um, do the part of the equations that involve the distributive property okay so that means if you see a number outside of parentheses like this you want to go ahead and do that first and you always want to kind of just do one or two steps at most in your problem solving process so let me just demonstrate that for here okay so the distributive property means I'm going to take this 4 multiply by this x not 4 and multiply by that 6 I'm going to get 4x plus 24 now I'm just going to continue to write this here this minus 10x is equal to now I'm going to do the distributive property here 2 times 5x is 10x and then I have 2 uh, times this negative 1 here is going to be a negative 2. Now before you move forward with any equation, always double check your work. So I'm just going to look and see here 4 times x, that's good. 4 times 6, 24, negative 10x, 10x, and negative 2. Okay, so looks good to me. You kind of like I'm auditing my work as I'm going. You know, these are like math habits that you want to develop to be successful in uh, any level of math course that you're going to be, you know, wanting to uh, or uh, take or having to take. Okay, math is really all about your, you know, habits. And neatness and organization are like critical. All right, so at this point in the problem, you kind of want to uh, tighten up the left-hand side of the equation and the right hand side. So here we have a, the left hand side and here we have the right hand side. Now, typically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put all of our variable terms here and all of our number terms here. Okay, So we're going to kind of shift things around, combine things and move things around until we have all of our variable terms. Eventually it's going to be one single variable term and just one number Okay, on the right hand side. So the numbers are going to go on the right and the variable terms are going to go on the left. So let's go ahead and work on that now. And we'll start on the left. So what we want to do first is to see if we can combine any like terms. All right? And we can. So I have 4x and negative 10x. So when I combine these two uh, terms here, I'm going to get negative 6x plus 24. I can't combine the 24 with these are algebra terms. This is just a constant number. So, But I can't combine the negative 10x with 
this 4, and that's negative 6x. And then on the right-hand side, I can't combine anything here, so I'm just going to rewrite it just like that. Okay. All right, it's at this point of the problem, I need to start moving my num uh, variables. Excuse me. I'm going to move these variables over to the left-hand side, and I'm going to move my numbers over to the right-hand side of the problem. Remember, we want to get all our variable terms together on the left and all our number terms together on the right. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the numbers first. So here I have this uh, 24 on the left hand side. So I want to move it to the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides of the equation. Okay, And you want to just do it just like how I'm doing it here. So what's going on is I'm going to add down, okay, like in a column manner. And the result of doing that is going to be negative 6x. And when I add 24 with a negative 24, that becomes zero, goes away. So I'm just left with a negative 6x on the left-hand side. And then I have 10x plus nothing. It's just 10x. And then a negative 2 plus a negative 24 is negative 26. So if you understand what I just did there, that's excellent. So now I'm looking. I'm like, OK, well, I have uh, one variable term on the left, one variable term on the left-hand side. And that's what I want, but I got this other variable term over here. I'm going to have to address that because I have only have my one number. It's on the right. So all I need to do is just get rid of this negative or this 10x. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides of the equation, just like this. And when I do that, again, I'm going to add down, like in a column manner. And let's see the results. I'm going to get negative 6x plus a negative 10x is going to be negative 16x is equal to the 10x is over here, go away. 10x plus a negative 10x is 0. And that leaves me with negative 26. So I'm almost done. Okay. So to solve for x, what do I do? This is a real basic equation. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by a negative 16. So I get x is equal to a negative divided by negative is positive. So that's 26 over 16. Of course, we can reduce that fraction. I uh, won't uh, uh, get into that right now, but you definitely want to re uh, simplify all fractions. But that's basically how you would approach this problem. Okay, so hopefully you followed this step by step and you understood what to do. And if you were able to solve this, then that's that's pretty good. Okay, now but that again is not you know there's a lot more type of equations in algebra you need to solve, and this is again is a real basic one. I didn't have any fractions in here. It kind of made it nice and simple, but it's a good little spot check. To kind of see where you're at. Now, if you you know had issues with this, then you know that's definitely a uh, kind of a red flag that you got a lot of review to do. But even if you did this problem uh, well, you know you don't want to be overly confident. You you know you need to know a lot of different um, you know uh, math topics really well. Algebra math topics would include. And let's just take a look at uh, some of these. So here we have equations. You will need to know systems inequalities, uh, how to graph lines, how to write the equation of lines, quadratic equations, radical equations, rational, I'm kind of scribbling here, but there is a lot of topics that you really need to know very well uh, to do, you know, excellent on this MDTP elementary algebra um, assessment. So anyways, let's go and wrap up this video. Again, if you think that you like my teaching style and you're like, yeah, I can learn from this guy, I'm going to go ahead and invite you to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Literally, I have hundreds of videos on my channel right now that definitely can help you out and prepare for uh, this assessment. But I'm going to leave uh, the link to my full uh, prep course in the description of this video. That's something you want to check out. And if you enjoy the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, uh, are you having to take more math than this you know uh, you know what major are you going into what year are you in college um, I'm actually from uh, California originally so I'm always uh, interested in see what colleges people are going to I went to school in San Diego it was uh, you know an outstanding experience but I don't live in California now but nevertheless you know um, you know through my YouTube channel and whatnot I'm definitely able to help you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, not only in the United States, but worldwide. It's my passion. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and it helped you out. I wish you nothing but the best and have a great day.